So let's have a look at Affinity Publisher on the iPad Mini. Now I'm looking at the 2.6 beta version, but earlier versions are much the same. Now lots of people are wondering what you can do with Affinity Publisher. Well, let me show you. There's lots of samples here. You can see over the side there, lots of samples. Click on those. Now, what you do is have a look in these. Now, let's load Alice in Wonderland. And there we go, nicely loaded. And you can see there we've got page one. Well, I think it's page one. Let's have a look over the side. And there it is, page one. There it is. Now, there's lots of pages there. That scrolls right down to... Oh, quickly, 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 all the way down to page 120. Alice in Wonderland. And there's the last page. Let's go back up to the top, because this page here I want to show you. Now, I've got that reduced in sli size slightly, so we can see it clearly. But let's have a look at it first. So we'll just select that page. We've got that selected. Preview mode shows you what it looks like. Now, with that off, that's in edit mode. And you can see all of the, the bleed and the size of it. So let's have a look what that means. Go to the document menu, that one there. Document setup. Now, I don't want all those. I want don't want the whole document, and I don't want those. I want the selected spread, which is page one. Now, you can see over the right hand side here, we've got, it's a custom page, the page width and page height, 127 by 200 millimeters. Reflow through spread is the text. Scaling is anchored to the center. Scroll up, and this is the important bit. The margins are 15 millimeters on the inner side. That's the side next to the hinge, if you like, the gutter side. All the other, the outer, top and bottom margins are 10 millimeters. But the inner is 15. That's because when you join the book together down the middle, you don't want to be cracking the spine of the book to try and read the words if they've been stapled or glued into the center of the book. Now the colour of the outline, that's the bleed, and the margins are blue. Now I don't want to change that. I just want to cancel that at the moment. Now what we've got there is a page. Let's go and have a look at the master associated with that. And it's quite possibly that one. Now you can see master A is slightly greyer there, highlighted there. And you can see over here on the page, you've got section name and a hash sign. That's section, section name and the number. Now that's put in there by the system. Let me reduce that in size. That's way too small to see. Now the iPad mini obviously doesn't give you much real estate to work with. And you might be happier on an iPad or even a desktop, it's exactly the same. Now you'll notice down here on the left hand side, very faintly down there, is a hash. That's a marker place for a page number. So let's reduce that again. Bring that over there. And there we've got page number. Now. Because that's a section name over that side, you can see that there looks like a text frame, and so it is. If I drag that up out the way, you can see that there's your margins, 10, 10 millimeters all around, 15 millimeters in the center, 10 millimeters there, 10 millimeters there. Now we need somewhere to put the section name and the page number on each page. Now this is in the masters. So you create your masters, put in a text frame and put your section name and numbers in there. Now how do you get it? Let's have a look. Now that that's in highlight there, you can see the dots all around it. I've got it selected. Go to sections and there's section one. 
What does section one do? Pages one to four. That's that one there. Start on page one. We're not continuing page numbering because it's not continuing for anywhere. It's page one. Start page numbering at one. We haven't given that a section name, but the number style is simply one, two, three, four, and you include those on the exports. That's the section detail. And you, where was that available from? Let's reduce that in size again. And you can see that we're talking there and there's no image, no indication at all. If we tap on preview, you can see there's no indication at all of a page number or a section name. However, it goes page one to four. Have a look at the next section, which is that one there. Section two starts on page five and goes to page 12. And it's one through eight pages. One to four and one to eight. Starts on page five and the section name is down the rabbit hole. And you can see that down the bottom there. Starts on page five. It doesn't continue page numbering because that is one up the top there. We want this to be page one. Start page numbering at one. The section name is down the rabbit hole, so that appears there. And the page numbering style, one, two, three, four, and you want that included on export. So you can see that's where it is. Go back to section details and so forth. Now if I select that entire page, you can see there's the there's the um, section there. There's the text frame there. Now you'll notice that the document on the master page doesn't have text frames. If you put text frames with that kind of text on the master page, every page in your document will look at the same as the first page. And that's not what you want. Let's go back to sections. Master B. What have we got that's Master B. There's nothing on Master B except, let me turn that off again, there's our section name down the bottom with a page number. So Master B somewhere in that document will be applied. So we'll go back to the section name, there you go, frame text, and that's that one there that we've got selected. But let's go back, oh, sorry, leave that as normal. Go back to there. We don't want masters. What we want is pages. Manage pages. There's everything we can see in there. You can manage one page or manage all pages. Go back over there. And so forth down through the document. So if you're wondering, the point I'm trying to make here is if you're wondering how something works, have a look in the samples menu. There are lots of documents in there. Let's have a look at this one. Drawing the news, an artist's story. That's loading the sample. And you can see there it's got columns. Let's turn off preview. And you can see the columns there. It's a two-page spread. Let's have a look at that. Pages and masters. Two-page spread. Pages. Go back to masters there. Double-click or just click on the masters. And there's your spread. And for some reason they've got a grid in there, but that's probably to line things up which are on the pages. Now my best advice to you at this stage is to, if you're trying to work something out, go to the samples pages. Don't remove those samples because you can remove them, obviously. And check out what's in these various samples. They're very well made. Um, 
you can save them, you can alter them, and all that sort of thing. Okay, so that's it for the moment. Let's go back to Alice in Wonderland. And remember, you've got pages and the layers. We're not really worried about the layers. Don't forget there's bleed all around that. And there's all of the areas in the middle where things are placed. Okay, that's it for this little exercise. We'll move on to the next one momentarily.